The appearance of Matthew and Martha put an end to her fears. On seeing them, Adam stopped struggling. He was untied from the saddle and helped down. His ankles were unbound so he could walk, but his hands remained tied behind his back. He stumbled, perhaps still dazed, from the blow to his head, and Philip and Matthew supported him as they walked to the servant's entrance. As soon as they were alone, Martha turned to Lucy and inquired, in a nervous whisper, "'Has he told you?' "'You mean told me about Adam?' asked Lucy in turn. "'Yes. A little. I know he is not your son and that he was jealous of Philip.' "'He loves you, you know. I think that's what finally turned his mind.' Martha was weeping. Great, silent tears slipped down her worn face, and Lucy put a comforting arm around her, just as Martha had, in the past, done to her. "'They'll hang him or put him in bedlam. Poor lad, he's not right in the head. All those years I cared for him since he was a little, and we loved him, Matthew and I, like he was our own lad.' "'There, there, come on.' murmured Lucy consolingly. I'm sure Philip will not insist on anything so drastic. But Adam tried to kill him. Martha broke into fresh sobs, and there was nothing Lucy could do but wait quietly with her until Matthew returned and led his weeping wife into the manor. Lucy shivered in the chill night air. She didn't know what to do, whether to follow the two servants back into the house or wait until Philip reappeared and settled her fate for her. She retreated into the stable building, where the body heat of the horses and the bulky bales of straw provided some protection from the cold, damp air. As she stood there, idly stroking the muzzle of Philip's bay, its owner strode into the building, swinging a lantern. 